In this problem, we're taking a look at cases where the fluid velocity distribution at the inlet and at the outlet is different. And as a result, a net force is exerted on the flow. And we're trying to compute this. The answer to how to compute the net force on a flow like this one um, is found, again, using a very powerful and very general equation, which is the balance of momentum equation in fluid mechanics. This allows us to compute the net force here as a function of two terms. One is the change in time of the momentum inside the control volume. This would be, for example, the change of momentum um, due to the sloshing back and forth of water inside the tank, yes, inside of the control volume. And the second term is the sum, the net sum of the momentum flows coming in and out of the control volume. Um, what good is non-uniform velocity distribution math for? Um, well, let's take a look at a flow like this. Let's say you are interested in the flow around this boat, um, and you would draw a control volume that surrounds the boat, and that moves together with the boat. Uh, if you do that, and you move together with the boat on the control volume, then you will get a velocity inlet that's pretty uniform. But the velocity at the outlet, that's not at all uniform. Yeah? It would look like this. Inlet would be the velocity of the river, uh, relative to the boat, so the velocity of the boat relative to the river. But at the outlet, you would have a zone where you have very high velocity because of the thrusters of the boat, and a zone where the velocity is much lower, there's a deficit, because of the drag caused by the barges. And so the question becomes, then, in this case here, uh, with those two velocity distributions at the inlet and the outlet, how do we compute uh, the net force? What is the net force applying uh, on the water as a result of those two distributions. Um, so here's a worked out example for the momentum equation with non-uniform flow. So let's take a look at this. Um, we're looking in general at a family of flows and family of problems, which consist in measuring the velocity at the inlet and then the velocity at the outlet. Uh, the velocity at the inlet is uniform, the velocity of the outlet is not uniform. It has some kind of change in it, could be a bump, could be a deficit, and as a result of this, we try to compute what is the net force that was exerted on the flow at the center um, due to the fluid flow. In this particular problem, we're looking at a pipe flow. And there's air coming in from the left side, uh, going to the right side. And um, at the inlet, the flow has 20 meters per second uniform distribution, like so. And at the outlet, the flow has also 20 meters per second, but this velocity distribution is changed. And so you have a part of it that has only 19. This is the 19 here. And as you go up towards uh, y is equal to 2, so as y increases, um, then the velocity increases, and then you reach a velocity of 21. So that on average, you still have 20, but the velocity distribution is changed. And the question we try to answer is, what is the net force that is applying on the fluid, on the air, as a result of this change of velocity distribution. So let's take a look. Well, the first thing we do is we draw our control volume, which could be any shape we want. Uh, all that matters in a control volume is to choose very carefully the inlet and the outlet of the flow so that we have a very clear, clear-cut boundary at the inlet and at the outlet. Once you've done this, you can remove everything that doesn't belong. Um, so anything that's inside the control volume just disappears. Anything that's outside of the control volume just disappears and you're left with just the surface, um, and it's crossed by the inlet velocity, and it's crossed by the outlet velocity on the other side, and this is it. So based on this, uh, how can we compute the net force on the flow? Well, if we write this equation, let me try to switch the slides again. So we have, yes, so we have the picture down there um, to remind ourselves of what we're looking at. And this is a general equation for the net force due to the, to the, the fluid flow. And in this uh, distribution, uh, here, in particular, we have, in the first, first term here, we're going to have zero. This is because this is a change in time of something. And even though that something here, in that case, is not zero, this is the entire amount of momentum inside the control volume, it doesn't change with time. And so it's change d over dt with time is zero. So this whole first term will be zero. And then we're going to do, what we're going to do is going to split this into inlet and outlet. And so the equation looks like so here, where we have... And the, this term here at the inlet becomes just the same thing with in and the same thing with out here. Then there's this very annoying v rel dot n, 
the dot product of the velocity relative to the control surface um, and the n vector, which is a unit vector, which is always by definition pointing outwards. This is a number. This is not a vector, it's a number. And this we can write as a v orthogonal. So I'm going to replace here v rel dot n and v rel dot n every time by v orthogonal. v orthogonal is a pain because by definition it is negative incoming and positive outgoing. And so we need to pay real attention when we put in numbers uh, for this v orthogonal here. So the hoop number one out of two um, is the sign of the orthogonal. Again, the same equation as before. This v orthogonal here, when I'm going to replace it with its absolute value, I'm going to have to pay attention to the sign. And so I have a minus appearing in front when I put an absolute value here. And when I do the same with the absolute value there at the outlet, it's a positive number. And so this remains a plus. And so, okay. Uh, hoop number two is the sign of v when we drop the vectors. So again, the same equation here, it's a vector equation. This has x, y, and z components, three components. This is actually three equations. Well, this equation, when we drop the vectors, when we're only interested in the x direction, because the whole flow is entirely in this horizontal direction, uh, we're gonna be able to remove the vectors. But when we remove the vectors, some components of the vectors might be positive or negative, and we have to pay attention. So let's remove the, remove the vectors. So we have a, a vector equation top because now a scalar equation. This is the length of f net. And since all the vectors are in the x direction, I can just remove the arrows without changing the lengths. Now, hoop is that v in and v out here have positive or negative value depending on their orientation and depending on the orientation which defines where positive is. And so in this case, in this diagram, which is right here below, we have x positive in that direction, and all the velocities are also positive uh, in this direction. So all the numbers that in this equation, all the v in and v out, are going to be positive numbers. And so I can just now replace v in by the absolute value of v in, and v out by the absolute value of v out, and I'm safe. I don't need to change the sign in front of this. But this may change depending on the orientation of your vector, and the orientation of where positive is. And this depends on every problem. Okay, so let's take this equation here on the bottom and let's reproduce it again on the next slide, like so. And now we're going to integrate. We're going to carry out this whole integration. So let's do some cleanup first. V in, V in becomes V in squared, V out, V out, V out squared, like so. So V in has been condensed. And dA is the area at the inlet. And I split it into two components. One is the component vertical, which is y. So I split dA becomes dy. And then the component across the flow, which is in the z direction, becomes dz. And so this area, dA here, becomes dy dz. And so I do the same over there. What does this give us? Well, what is happening in the z direction? The integral of everything with respect to z is nonsense to us because everything that's going on in the z direction here um, is, well, in the z direction, nothing is happening, and, and, uh, to formulate it better. Um, so that every component of velocity, every component of every property is going to be exactly the same wherever I position myself in the z direction. So that this integral here, this outer integral with respect to dz, um, just disappears, and I just have to put here delta z. So this is the width of the pipe away from the screen, if you want. And the same thing for v out. Um, I'm going to take the row and put it out of the integrals, and again, row out of the integrals. And now I have to integrate this v in here from where to where? From the start, the value of y at the bottom, and the, to the value of y at the top. And this is y1 and y2 here. These are just the, the general values. Um, and these may be different at the inlet and at the outlet. Yeah, so be, pay very attention. Um, in this case, in this particular flow, we have the same limits up and top and bottom um, for both, but they may be different. So pay a little attention to that. So again, taking this last equation here and reproducing it on the next slide, we have this. Um, one of those two integrals will be very easy to carry out. And this is the integral for Vn because Vn squared here does not change. If you look at the diagram here below, Vn has a uniform distribution. It does not change with y. And so v in can just get out of the integral, and we're left with the integral from 0 to y2 of dy, and this becomes just delta y, like so, delta y in. 
v out, however, has to remain like so because v out is a function. It's not, um, it's not a number. It's not a constant. And so now I put numbers in into this thing. And so for the inlet flow, I have delta z. So minus delta z is one. The width across um, the, the pipe into the screen, if you want, is one meter. Um, delta y, this is the height. This is two meters. This is the density of air. And this is the incoming velocity, 20 squared, v1 squared. And at the bottom, I have again y, so delta, sorry, delta z, the density rho, and then I integrate from 0 to 2 this function for v out. v out here is 19 plus y. I put it to the square because there's a square here. And I integrate this with respect to, to dy. I spare you the math. You can just plug in the result. And then you get plus 885 newtons. OK, so that's so much for the math. But the first time you do this, surely there must be an element of surprise when you see the result. How come we have a plus 800 newtons of force? just to change the distribution of velocity. Let's take a look again at the, at the original flow. We have here, in this flow, an incoming velocity uh, of 20 meters per second and an outgoing velocity of also 20 meters per second. On average, it's still exactly, precisely 20 meters per second. Um, we have the same mass flow, incoming and outgoing. And so what happened here? Just because we slowed down a little bit the air, at the bottom and accelerated a little bit the air on the top, not changing the average velocity, we have to apply a force to the flow? Well, yes. This is because momentum is not proportional to velocity. It is proportional to velocity squared. And even though we have not changed the average velocity, we do change the average square of velocity. So in other words, if you slow down the air from 20 to 19, so this particle of air here is now flowing with 90 meters per second, and you slow it down, then the air loses momentum. And this amount of momentum is smaller than the amount of momentum you have to provide to accelerate the air from 20 to 21 on the top here. So that overall, somebody has to pay. Somebody has to push the fluid, add momentum to the fluid to change its velocity distribution from an average of 20 meters per second to an average of 20 meters per second, but with a slanted distribution, like so. Who is doing this? Where is this force coming from? It could be a machine, which is hidden inside the pipe. It could be some moving propeller. Um, but if there is no propeller, if there's no machine adding anything, um, then typically it would be pressure. So there would be a higher pressure at the inlet than there is at the outlet. And this change in pressure is causing, or is equivalent to this change in velocity distribution, like so. We don't know that. So the integral analysis does not allow us to find out what is happening inside. It just quantifies the net effect. So in practice, you could have pressure pushing the flow, sorry, in this direction, and you have shear on the contrary, which is slowing down the flow and removing momentum from the flow. All we're able to calculate with inlet and outlet is the net sum of those two effects, of those two effects. So this is how you manipulate um, the net um, force equation, the balance of momentum equation in a flow where the inlet and the outlet have different velocity distributions.